Russell Brand is so infamous for his seduction powers, he's twice been named Shagger of the Year. Well, that gets him a special place in my heart, not to mention we both find yoga to be a godsend, but what is his actual formula? How does he get woman after woman giggling and laughing and flirting and teasing and blushing every which way every time he opens his mouth? It's not me that will be getting elevated to the status of a god that day. It will be her. <laughs> As you watch this breakdown here, you're gonna notice his secrets are powerful, yet they're nothing that you can't learn yourself with the right insight. So let's begin. Did you know that some women will exploit their sexuality to take control of a situation? In this clip, we're gonna see Khloe Kardashian try to do just that. And as you watch, I want you to notice how Russell Brand never plays into her friend. Do we make you horny? <laughs> I think that you're all very beautiful, and it's nice to see you all on one couch where you are malleable. Yes, I have no idea what you just said. I malleable understand. just means can be controlled or manipulated. Oh, the, the accent is just dreamy. Thank you. <laughs> Russell Brand is a master at frame control. She says horny, expecting him to just fall over, right? But instead he says, well, I like that you're all on one couch and malleable. She says, I don't know what that means. He says, it means I can control you. Ignoring his frame, she comments again on his accent and ignoring her, he says hello to that little dude in the blue sweater. Women will often test you by ignoring your frame and assuming their own. Now, if you always give into it, well, you're like almost every other guy, a pushover. Remember, women want the man to be the cause not the effect. If she's constantly the one controlling the frame, you are at the effect and you are not the cause. Most of the time, for her to feel attracted and enchanted, we need you to be at the cause, got it? Here is another example where the girl, clearly attracted, is still testing him this way. Are you gonna do some comedy though? Yeah, I'll get Okay, tell me Jack. Well, I'm sort of busy now doing this. <laughs> It's like she says fetch, not because she wants you to, but because she wants to see if you will. If he had told her a joke there, he becomes dancing monkey, right? But instead, he passes the test by one, not playing into her frame, and two, by keeping it light and playful. When a girl finds out about my best-selling book or that I'm a dating coach, she often says, tell me what you tell your guys. And I almost always respond, well, first, let's see what you know. If you were a dude trying to seduce me right now, how would you do it? Now, another one of Russell's weapons is, like Harvey Specter, he is a wordsmith. Watch here as he seduces a damsel with the age-old pitch of regret minimization. You won't, I don't think, one day, Kat, when you're no longer young and beautiful, look back at your life and say, thank I God I didn't kiss that mysterious Englishman. My mom Englishman. is a plastic surgeon, so I'll always oh, really? be young and beautiful. I quote, you won't, I don't think one day, Kat, when you're no longer young and beautiful, look back at your life and say, thank God I didn't kiss that mysterious Englishman. Now granted, all she heard there was, you know, you won't always be young and beautiful and starts qualifying herself to him immediately, but it got the job done nonetheless. Oh, always I be didn't young kiss and beautiful, that mysterious my mom is a plastic surgeon. Have you ever heard one of the best things that you can do is to frame her as the sexual aggressor? It's true and it's highly effective. For example, if she were to say to you, I'm so hungry, well, you might say, you know, if you wanted to take me out for a romantic dinner, you can just ask me. In this clip, I want you to notice how Russell uses the same idea to turn friendly physical contact into her escalating on him sexually. We are all equal in the ice cream world. And see, we talk of world peace in this interview, physical thank you. There. <laughs> Imagine if he had said nothing then it would have just been you know, a motherly, friendly touch. But the minute he perks up and he points out a hey, physical contact right there, he flips the script and now she's the one putting the moves on him. Do you see the difference? Good, because another one of Russell's weapons is being incredibly charming without being needy. Let's watch how he does it right here. You knew you were gonna be famous, right. but you were afraid that it was gonna have a traumatic effect. Is that, am I misquoting? What I think it was is I was an only child. I was an insecure little fella. And I thought that if I didn't become famous, there was no way that I was going to feel any sense of connection or happiness. I was a nervous little lad. I'm very grateful that I did become famous, because otherwise I don't think I'd have ever had the confidence to talk to anyone, let alone someone with dimples like those, for God's sake. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're uh, very if all you do is talk about her dimples and her beauty, you're creepy. Mm. But if all you do is talk about yourself, you're insecure. Mm. So what's the solution? Me, you, 
communication, where most of the focus is either on you or her without any attachment, and it's not about really other people or other things, okay? We discuss this in detail in the Craig Ferguson Breakdown, which you should watch if you haven't seen it yet, and Russell shows it to us right here as well, right? First he talks about himself, but he bridges that gap and brings it back to her saying, without it, I don't think I'd have the confidence to talk to anyone, let alone someone with dimples like those. For God's sakes, love. You see how he discloses about him, but then he brings it back to her. Without it, there's no charm and there's no connection. And we have to comment on his push-pull, don't we? He compliments her dimples, that's the pull, and then playfully he gets mad at her for having those dimples. All right, that's the push. I'd have ever had the confidence to talk to anyone, let alone someone with dimples like those, for God's sake. Right? <laughs> Would you rather flirt or have typical boring conversations? Well, Russell Brand doesn't do boring. Watch how the host tests him just a little bit with the random question, and instead of a boring answer, we get gold. Are you a fan of Karl Marx? Is that why you're wearing that shirt? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I've been reading Das Kapital in the dressing room and I've come up with a whole new socialist agenda which I'm keen to espouse now on your show. <laughs> I help our ratings a lot. I should say so. I mean, why stop at free health care? Let's move to an absolute egalitarian social system. That's my message. Also, watch the VMAs. <laughs> you think you can make women laugh and blush the same way? Of course you can like riding a bike. This is just a skill. Here's how Russell just did that, right? She asked him a yes or no question about his shirt. Instead of answering yes or no, he went yes and, which is an old improv trick where instead of killing the conversation with a dead yes, you say yes and as you expand the storyline. And when answering, he did something women find very attractive. He played up his mischievousness. Watch it again and remember yes and and mischievousness. Are you a fan of Karl Marx? Is that why you're wearing that shirt? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I've been reading Das Kapital in the dressing room and I've come up with a whole new socialist agenda which I'm keen to espouse now on your show. <laughs> what if the next time someone asks you about your shirt or your shoes or a class you're taking or a trip you're taking or a restaurant you're trying, you don't answer boring but you instead model Russell. For example, imagine a girl asks you, do you like whiskey? And instead of yes or no, you say, I do, but I find that it's hangovers get in the way of my plans to spark a sexual revolution across the world. How much more interesting do you think she might find that than just yes or no? All right, I've actually done the science here and the answer is this much more interesting. Now, jokes aside, right, most guys, they're far too linear in their conversations and I highly recommend that you just inject just a little bit of absurdity and playfulness and unpredictability into your answers and your conversations. Trust me, you will like the results that you're gonna have. Now, if you enjoyed this breakdown, be sure to hit that like and push that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already because I am working on new breakdowns like this for you right now. And hey, what if I could show you the exact system that I've now taught to over 10,000 guys for dating the hottest women? This is not for every guy at all and it is certainly not for guys who are closed-minded to life-changing solutions. But if that's not you, click that link in the description to get early bird access to this exact system for a limited time and I'm gonna show you everything that I've learned about attracting and dating the hottest girls and the highest quality women. If you're a man willing to take action, you will not look back at the system and think, thank God I didn't study Jason's complete system for seduction that one time he offered it to me. Make sense? Fantastic. All right, well, let's recap real quick. All right, number one, frame control. Two, being the cause, not the effect. Three, wordsmithing. Four, sexual aggressor framing. Five, media communication. Six, the yes and to avoid dead stops. And seven, playing up your mischievousness. That was fucking fun, wasn't it? Well, I am Jason Capital, America's Honest Dating Coach. You are a certified badass, and I'll see you soon, stud.